So today is the aftermath of the destruction. <laughs> now begins the cleanup. And my wife's there. We got a fire going on up yonder there. There's Victoria. Your daughter. Come here, Victoria. Oh, you're not going to say hi. Hello. I can't oh. see. We got video footage of her cutting a piece of wood, <laughs> didn't we? Yeah, I was the big macho man. <laughs> <laughs> but we're getting there. We're getting started on the cleanup. Patrick over there, he volunteered to stick around for a while and help out. He did a lot of help yesterday. So the 500i was a big hit. And that saw is one of them saws that no standard sharpening is ever gonna work for that saw. And this gentleman here, you can thank him for dialing in that chain. It piqued my interest. <laughs> he just kept taking more and more off the rakers and all that stuff. He's the one who did it. Now this is a gentleman who sent us the square file, the hand filed chain. It's actually hanging right here. He's the one who hooked us up with that. And that, uh, that chain's pretty freaking fast, isn't it? But that 500i, that was an intriguing saw. Um, so, so much power, so much power that you can do whatever you want with the chain and it'll still pull it. But the trick is to get it to pull that super aggressive chain without being full of chatter. You don't want it to overpower the chain. Yeah, you don't want to overpower the chain and break your chain. You don't want it to chatter and all that stuff. So we really, or he, he put the time in yesterday. I was too busy. So he's got that thing dialed in pretty freaking good. I think one minor tweak on the tooth angles yeah, and it'll get be the right going. angles. I think that thing would be really it's, dangerous. I think it'll go up just another couple of percent whenever. I got the rakers down to about 40 thousandths. 40 thousandths on the rakers. And that thing is just eaten. I think I'm gonna do a video here in the future. We're gonna run a regular saw with a regular chain. And then we'll stick that chain on that saw. And just to show. <laughs> it'll stop it right it, 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 Yeah, it'll stop your average saw right there in the spot. Like a freaking, like hitting a freight train. <laughs> I mean, other saws are as fast as that, but that 500, that thing's got more pull than yeah, anything I've seen. That's, that's the impressive side of it. So, so, so the 500 eyes, you're kind of limited where you can go with the uh, RPM. Yeah. Because of the electronics and all that, um, you know, they're, they're kind of set to work with a certain RPM range and you, there's nothing you can do about it. So, but that thing, the pull on it is the... It's incredible. It's incredible, yeah. It really piqued my interest yesterday when no. I just, it couldn't get it to eat fast enough. And... <laughs> it took most of the day to get it dialed in. Yeah. But here's the interesting thing. So that, if you're not familiar with that 500i, it's built by Charles Briscoe. And you did good. You did real good. Yeah. But Charles Briscoe will tell you flat out, that's not his hottest 500i. It's not. <laughs> he built one hotter than that. That's awesome. I'd so what, get my hands on that one. I know. <laughs> that's Grant's song. Grant Foreman? Yeah, he's the steel timber storage guy. That's oh. his song. <laughs> so what do you say we go down here to the wood pile and take a look at the carnage? So here you go. There's the carnage. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is my favorite smell in the whole world. Freshly cut wood. Oh, it's awesome. And this did not take long. Two to three. Two hours? Yeah. Maybe. Roughly two hours, I'd say. Once and we knocked out. Yeah, we knocked out the entire trash load. It's freaking awesome. Once we figured out the system, we rolled right through it. Yeah. That mini made it nice. It, did. it made it effortless. Now we're gonna have a few things like that that are too big, we'll cut. There's gonna be a couple of those laying around, you know. I tried to get them. But we'll be good. We'll be just good. Now the splitter is going to get the work out. So compare the size of this pile 
to the splitter and the truck, you get kind of an idea. And that's a big splitter. Yeah, this is a big splitter. This is what, twice the size of your average homeowner? Oh yeah, that's twice the size. You don't realize it is, it is physically twice the size of a normal splitter. And then the funny part is, this is only half the wood we cut. Yeah. There is another pile down just the street, as <laughs> just as big. And we didn't get through all that that wood. So we, even with all of this going on, we didn't get all the wood cut, which is just flat out amazing. Now we pulled a couple of logs from the pile and saved them for videos. So we pulled out a, uh, a medium sized one, probably, what do you think? 12 incher. Right there's a six incher and probably one that's closer to 20 inches. Yeah, that one's 18, 20. Yeah, so we got some videos coming on that. Now I'm gonna have another video coming of the tree work because we had two gentlemen here who climbed the tree and did some tree work for us. And that's gonna be its own separate video that I gotta get edited and put together for you yet. So you'll get to see that coming here soon. But this is it. That is how you make a lot of wood disappear in a hurry. And everybody loved the fact that we were cutting firewood. Um, instead of dogs. Instead of cookies, yeah. yeah cookies. cookies, I guess, you know, it's fun running your saw on that, but when it's, there's just something about going out and cutting the firewood, you know, that really just, like this gentleman here, he doesn't realize I got the camera on. <laughs> <laughs> It's just something about cutting firewood. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It, it, there's a difference. You can cut cookies all day long, but it's it's whenever you really stink, sink your saw into real firewood, that really tells you a lot, you know? Well, Patrick, Patrick and I are gonna do a little more cleanup. We're not gonna go crazy today. Get the canopy down, burn some trash. Uh, yeah. Just a few things. Well, I got about as much uh, cleanup done today as I feel like doing. So, you know, it was a, a lot of work over the weekend. So, I'm going to kind of take you around and show you the aftermath. All the destruction and everything everywhere. We got three different areas to show you. Plus the shop. So, hey, you're going to enjoy this. Alrighty. So here is the firewood pile. I think I already showed you this once. She's just piled up everywhere. That's an entire tracks load of wood cut up. We got a lot of splitting ahead of us. I did save a couple of logs. I got them sitting here and there's more around the back and I'm gonna go show you that here just in one sec. Alrighty. Now I ended up a little too busy to get much splitting in. So, you know, we didn't get much splitting in, but that's not a big deal. We just ended up busy, you know? We were having a lot of fun. So we just kind of stuck with the fun part, you know what I mean? But you tell me, would you swing an ax at this pile? Or would you grab the splinter? What would you do? You know what my choice is. Now this is one area that I still got to get all cleaned up. We got some of it done, but the rest of it will wait. Now, we did all this stuff for racing and we really didn't even use it. We were having so much fun on the firewood that, you know, we didn't really care to come back here and do this. So it just kind of turned into a little, little bit of cookie cutting and you can see we didn't really do a whole lot of cookie cutting, you know? Uh, it's all right. Um, you know, we got wood left over that I can use for videos. And this here's two additional logs that I saved. Um, I'm keeping these for videos. So I'll be able to make videos, cut cookies off of this stuff and, you know, future content. Now, let me go show you the coal part of the destruction. So here is the aftermath of the tree that was stuck up there in that crotch. You can kind of see the damage in the bark up there. 
He said it looks like it sank in about three inches. That's how much it was putting force on that. But here is part of what we had to take down in order to do it. We got this stick and this stick. That one looks like locust. That one is most definitely poplar. There it leaves. This stuff will be used for cookie cutting. That's my plan. I'm just gonna clean up the brush and I'll save this stuff for cutting cookies. Then we also got this big stick now. See it here? It runs way out yonder for about 50 feet or so. We're gonna drag it out of there. And I'm planning on using that for cookie cutting as well. Um, I don't need to drag it out anytime soon. You're seeing that I have plenty of stuff laying there, but this is, you know, future wood for cookie cutting. And I had been back and forth on what species it was. I thought maybe ash. Then I started thinking maybe poplar. But if you look right here, if you guys know how to identify trees, right there is your leaves. You see them on these branches here? Those are your leaves. Tell me what kind of wood that is. All righty. She's about a 50 foot long log and we're gonna yank it out of there and save it for cookies. She's out though, that big nasty leaner. She is now out, finally. Well, we're in the shop now. Um, I did a little clean up. You can see here, these were our homemade benches for seating that I turned into shelving. So, yeah. I did have tables here, but I turned it into, I decided to go with this here just for shelving purposes. And I like it. I like it better than using tables, I'll tell you that. Um, but uh, we're pretty much all cleaned up. Uh, we got a few autographs here. But as you see, everybody started signing the fridge. There's plenty of room for more signatures. Here, let me flip this camera around. You'll see better. There you go. We got Nick Pixel there. JK Saw Shop, Bell Hopper, you know? So, knock them or whatever. But yeah, I, I'm hoping to someday fill this fridge up with autographs. So, there you go, a little video on the aftermath. Cleanup is done. Our front area, here, let me show you from this side. She's looking good. The next big project, we gotta get this shop closed in. Get a roof over the back side. So, yeah, we got some more projects coming. We're gonna be closing this whole front end and putting doors in. So, I gotta get the lumber, get some stuff organized for that, and we'll be doing that. Alrighty, so, hey, hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll catch you on the next one. Later.